All right, ladies and gentlemen, to start off this show, I didn't want to do it. I really didn't want to do it. I just wanted to leave it on, on Sunday and just not revisit this topic again. But I gotta, I gotta talk about my beloved Chicago Bears and the pitiful performance that they put up against the Houston Texans. Now, did they score 23 points? 23 points. Yes. Was it a close game? Yes. Did Cairo Santos kick a game-winning field goal at the buzzer to win it for them? Yes. Is Houston a decent team? Yes, and I say decent. Because they were shit last year. They were trying to figure stuff out. And now you can could, you could kind of see they're like working at it. They're like trying to gel a little mo- little bit more. They're keeping games close. If Depending on what where you got the spread this past Sunday. They're technically, if you got it like Houston plus four. Houston is technically 3-0 and against the spread this year. So they're keeping games close. But you also have to remember... It's the Houston fucking Texans, people. They're not a good football team. Granted, the Bears aren't a good football team either. But the fact of the matter is, we're keeping close games with teams like the Houston Texans. Now, don't give me this shit like, oh, we beat the 49ers in the first first week. Guess what? The first week... Fuck, I just hit my mic. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's ruining. Anyway, um, their running back goes down. It was a fucking monsoon (coughs) and shitty coverage on that pass to Pettis I think like that was wide open for fields for the to throw to for the touchdown gave them the win so a lot of lucky breaks but overall the Bears are probably the most fake two-on-one team to ever grace the NFL they are probably the most fake Two and one team to ever lead a division. Hell, they're probably the most fake team to ever lead a fucking division. I mean, this team is just garbage. Like, look at them. Minus, minus the run game because God bless Dave, uh, Monty. He went down in a heap, and I hope for nothing but the best for that guy. He's is a workhorse. He was doing so good, and I just I feel so much pain that he had to go down like that. But having said that. Mr. Khalil Herbert, have yourself a day, guy. 20 carries, 157 yards, two touchdowns, average 7.9 yards a carry. Granted, 52 of those 157 were on one one run, but still, that's a game and a half. But the sad part is, we don't have a fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still, I still have this lingering fucking cold that just will not go away. Anyway, we don't have a passing game to match it. We have Justin Fields going 8 for 17 with 106 yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions, five sacks, and a 19.4 QBR. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not good. That's not good for somebody that we picked number 11 overall. That's not good for someone that we spent so much on to move, to go get up to 11 and get him. It's not good when I'm watching this game and imagining David Mills or Davis Mills in a Chicago Bears uniform. That's not good. Now, could it be Getzy's not giving him enough, like, passing plays or good passing plays? Sure. He's got 45 passing attempts on the year. That's dead last for qualifying quarterbacks. And by qualifying, I mean guys that played all three games and started. Dead last. And whenever I see him pass the ball, it's like all these dinky dunk plays to backs and like stupid little screens to receivers or like two or four yards out, like that kind of stuff. And whatever, and it it's infuriating. It's infuriating to see. But on the flip side of the coin, whenever I see Fields go downfield, like ten yards, fifteen yards, twenty yards. 
he's overthrowing guys and throwing into like double or triple coverage. Granted, he had some good dimes in that game. I think he threw to Mooney up the middle that like sent Mooney on his ass. It was like 10 yards. But besides that, it's just, it's a repetition. It's like, he keeps screwing up. He keeps screwing up. He keeps screwing up to the point where it just makes you think, are the Bears coaches trying to mask over the fact they made a bad decision? Are they trying to mask over the fact that the guy can't get the ball down the field? There are so many factors at play that it's just hard to really make an educated guess or assumption on the situation until we see him for an entire season. Because, yes, it is three games. It is three games. So it's not like these three games are going to tell us all about Justin Fields and this offense. I mean, hell, it could be the offense's fault, and then Justin leaves, and he does good somewhere else. It could be Justin's fault, and we get another quarterback in there, and we end up going to the playoffs. Who knows yet? But... The fact of the matter is, he's just not doing it, man. And it sucks because we were everybody in Chicago was so hyped for him, but the poor kid came in, had a shitty coaching situation, had so much coaching turnover, so much drama, and he had an entire city on his back going, this is our guy, this is our guy, he's going to take us to the promised land. I get it, football is a man's game, but that's just got to suck. I mean, come on. You got to feel for the kid. But the cool thing is, whenever I see him like in press conferences and whatnot, he just seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders. And I, I think he's going to do great. I, I think he's going to do great in this, in this league. But the one other thing I want to touch on from that game was the fact, and I feel like the Bears have a knack for doing this. I don't know why. I feel like they have a knack for just taking random guys from opposing teams and making them look like all pros when they're really not. And the one guy I want to point out, if, if I can pull him up here, phone, keyword, okay, thanks, pal. Uh, Jalen Petrie. Jalen Petrie had two picks in that game, and I'm pretty sure he had a sack. I could, and he had a sack. He had two picks and a sack. And he's a fucking rookie. To my knowledge. Let me look at let me look at his lineup here. Yeah, he's, a, he's 23 years old. He's 5'11", 198 pounds. He's about the size of me. But shorter. And you let him get two... I, I know that doesn't matter, but I'm just trying to... For those of you that know me, trying to give you the picture here. Granted, I am 6'4". But my point is, we're making... Justin Fields made that guy look like an all-pro. Justin Fields made that guy look like he's going to get, like, a 10-year contract. And it's just... It's the most infuriating team ever. It's the most infuriating performance ever. I wish we lost that game. Just to really cement the fact that this team sucks. But you know what? Now we're 2-1. and one. Now we're in first place. And now we got to deal with all this bullshit like, oh... Like, the, the shitty media people. Oh, the Bears for real when they're really not. If you... Side note, I'm going on a tangent here. I don't care. If you think... If you're going to give me this bullshit about... Oh, are the Bears for real? Are they going to go anywhere? You might, you might as well just stop watching football for the rest of your life. This team is garbage, people. Garbage. They're not good. The only good thing about them is the running game. The defense, defense is like lower top 10, like between, if you're going to rank them between seven and 15, maybe they're not, they're not the best. They're not. And I might be just like reaching there. They might even be like a little worse than that, but they're not the greatest. So the fact of the matter is they're not just to wrap this up. Cause I know I'm like stretching this out too long. They're not going anywhere. They're going to play the Giants next week, and it's going to be another close game, and it's going to infuriate me even more. They might even lose because the Giants don't actually look terrible yet. They are not. They don't look like the Giants of before, and it looks like Dable is doing something right there. And I'm just going to lose my mind and just con- basically just consume extraordinary amounts of beer the rest of this season. Because Jesus Christ, fuck this team.